Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. One thing that has really caught my attention is, um, you know, the dosing bacteria, you know, and, and I never had done that sort of thing before. You know, I've been keeping reef tanks for a long, long time as well. And I had never been a, um, you know, one to dose bacteria. But, you know, so let's, let's talk about a couple of the ones that you guys have, the uh, Microbacter 7 and the uh, Microbacter Clean, which I actually have been using the Clean for the last um few weeks. So what's just for those of the folks out there that don't know, what's the difference between MB7 and Clean? Okay, so they're quite different products. MB7 is a very old product. Um, we probably came out with that product probably in 2007, uh, sometime in that time frame. Um, it's a very tried and true product. Um, it's, um, it's a member of the older genre of bacteria. The cool thing about Microbacter 7 is it's a fully tested product. What launched that product to be actually the uh, place in the industry, which it's probably the top selling marine bacteria in America and, you know, very heavily sold worldwide. <laughs> and um, there was a, a veterinarian pathologist who did a video on Microbacter 7 sometime before 2010 and um, basically gave it high ratings. And it was a very, um, um, it was a good video because he paid for the product, he paid for the setup, he paid for the testing. So there was nothing that we donated to him. So it was not like we hired someone to do this. He did it on his own just because he was curious and he gave it a glowing report. And really up to that point, there were no bacteria that I'm familiar with that um, really had that level of, of um, uh, authoritative person researching the product and determining that it was a, an appropriate product. There were a lot of, let's say, snake oil bacteria at that point. And so uh, Microbacter 7 you know, just was established as a really good product um, from early on. And, um, you know, it still had its limitations. We have newer bacteria now. Microbacter Clean is one of them. And then we also have Microbacter Start XLM now, which is a revolutionary product of its own. So um, the, the real difference between Microbacter 7 and Microbacter Clean, Microbacter 7's forte is cleaning sludge out of gravel and so forth in, in, uh, in aquariums and uh, taking the nutrient level down. When I say nutrients, I'm primarily talking about organic nutrients in this case, you know, fish waste, detritus, mum, uh, that sort of thing. Um, Microbacter 7, I mean, Microbacter Clean came along later, I'm going to say probably in 2013, 2014 in that time frame, and it's a totally different product. So Microbacter 7 is largely a cysted product that most of the bacteria in there form cysts and are dormant. Sometimes you'll hear the term live bacteria, you know, versus cysted bacteria. And, um, uh, cysted bacteria are very, very tough bacteria. Okay. So they can those are the ones they found in the pyramids that were 2,000 years old and still viable, okay? So they form a cyst uh, kind of like a maggot does and can live through all kinds of environments, including being totally dried out. So anytime that you buy dry bacteria, and I notice there are a number of them on the market now, they are all cysted bacteria. They can't be anything else. Live bacteria, can. there's no dry stage, okay? Now, that's not to say you can't freeze dry them to a certain extent, but the life is very short and, you know, it's not the same as other dried products would be. So Microbacter Clean is a product that we came out really to address a lot of the uh, algae overgrowth issues that people have, uh, where you have all sorts of things growing in your tank that you really don't want to grow, you know, and it's particularly good at green algae such as hair algae, bryopsis, even Valonia. I mean, it's almost miraculous on Valonia because if you break a piece of Valonia, the bubble algae, then you get thousands of them all over your tank. Where with Microbacter Clean, they just dissolve. Yeah, you know, I um, I didn't realize that, but um, so MB7 is really what you would 
use to tackle, like say, brown and red algaes, whereas the clean would be more for the uh, for the green algae, the, the problematic algae. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, and of course, bacteria is so much more than algae. I mean, really, bacteria only address nutrients, and so they're not necessarily eating the algae. They're just taking all the nutrients up, and they out, and you're know, outcompeting it. You know, which you can outcompete algae other ways too. And then we have also have a chemical product called Razor that you can address it with, you know, from a chemical standpoint. But um, bacteria do so much more in your tank. You know, we talked a little bit before the show about the fact that people sometimes don't realize that corals in the wild eat what's called bacterial plankton. And those are just plankton that are basically bacteria floating in the ocean. And you can do the same thing in your marine aquarium. And it can be a really good source of live food you know, which live food's kind of hard to come by. You know, you, you can raise different things like rotifers and copepods and, you know, any number of, of different uh, little crustaceans and so forth. But, but they're difficult to raise. And bacteria is something you can really get a hold of easily and dose into your system for a food. And it works quite well. I had a, uh, a reef keeping buddy who uh, said he had a great, great experience using clean. And I think some, some other folks did as well. And, and they actually said that it got rid of cyano. I don't know if there was a direct causation in terms of using clean and, and, and seeing the, the cyano eliminated. But um, so could clean theoretically also combat cyano? Or do you think the NB7 is a better product to try to uh, get rid of, um, you know, the cyano? Because I, I have some small amounts of it in, in the back of my 187 gallons established system. And, you know, I know why it's there because they're, you know, the tank is chock full of corals. Circulation is, is kind of getting uh, cut off by the corals. So I have to constantly do a lot of pruning and, uh, you know, but I think that's why the cyan was there. It's just because of the detritus is collecting in those certain spots. So I, I blow it with a, uh, with a power head every, every other day. But, um, what, what are your, um, what are your thoughts in terms of clean and cyan? Is that something that it could help with, or is that just coincidence? Yeah, it can. I mean, both Microbacter 7 and Clean do have a, a, a crossover area where they do a lot of the same things, and then they diverge from that point. So they're kind of like brothers, but they don't uh, do exactly the same thing. And so, um, you know, what we see is that most people have better results with Clean with, um, with green algae and better results with Microbacter 7 with dinoflagellates and and cyano. But that's not to say the clean won't help cyano, it will. And even razor the same way. So razor does really, really well at green algae, but if you're using it uh, with cyano, many times you'll see a reduction in cyano or the cyano may even die out. You mentioned uh, dinoflagellates and MB7. You know, I, I see a lot of folks, you know, dose MB7, you know, when they uh, come upon uh, dinoflagellates and that's just, you know, building up their, their bacteria population to help fight the, uh, the dinos. But I also know that a lot of folks like to use MB7 on a consistent, regular basis. Do you, would you recommend, you know, I, so I understand that it's a more stout bacteria than clean. Um, I guess it's got more giddy up. Would, would you recommend carbon dosing? Do you have to carbon dose if you're using MB7? Well, you know, you don't ever have to carbon dose. There's a lot of carbon in almost any aquarium. But the, but the issue is if you carbon dose, you will rev up the bacterial growth. In other words, they'll start multiplying like bunny rabbits. So if that's something that you want, then carbon dosing is a good way to achieve that. Now, we have two products for carbon dosing. We have a product called Reef Biofuel, which is a liquid. That's my favorite. And then we have a pelleted product called Catalyst, which um, is our pelleted product. We use pellets that come from Germany. Um, a lot of people use pellets from third world countries. I won't mention which ones. Um, countries that viruses come from sometimes. And um, the, you know, carbon dosing can be performed by many ways. We used to use alcohol back in the old days. You'd want to use something like vodka. Um, certainly you should never put methanol in your tank. Uh, there's one company actually sells methanol for use in aquariums, which I can't believe because it's poison. It has no hmm. food uses whatsoever. Um, you could even dose glucose to your aquarium. Um, what what that does is it kind of puts the it's kind of like a, 
an alcohol burner on a race car. You know, it, it, it really gives some juice to the bacteria in the system. So if you're having, you know, things growing that you don't want to grow and you want to rev up the bacteria, carbon dosing is a good idea. And, um, you know, the biggest reason that we came out with products for that is if you dose glucose, if you dose vodka, you're likely to get problems with overgrowth of some other things that you don't want, you know. And so um, our products are designed to not cause the other issues that you might get, like extra growth of cyano or something like that, you know, due to the, the extra nutrients in solution. So some more questions for you about clean and um, MB7. I mentioned before about um, blowing detritus, you know, off the rocks and, and even uh, maybe stirring up the sand bed a little bit. Is is that a good idea when you're using these uh, products is to do that on a regular basis to try to stir up detritus in the tank? I mean, it's, it's probably a good idea no matter what you're doing, but will it um, will it matter in terms of using clean and MB7? Probably not. It would matter a lot more with razor. You know, it would be, it would not be a bad product process with razor because you're going to get more more of the product right on the problem, you know, so, uh, with razor, I would do that. Um, I mean, we don't recommend it on the bottle, but it's not a bad practice. It's a good practice. Um, and with the bacteria, it may provide some little bit of a boost, but really what you're doing with the bacteria, the bacteria is not eating the nuisance anyway. It's, it's eating the food. And so it probably doesn't matter as much. Now that's my opinion. You know, of course it's a hobby. You can do lots of different things, and some people swear by certain methods and others by others. Right. What about using clean and MB7 together? Can you, or is that counterproductive? Okay, so the, the age of the aquarium is crucial. So on a brand-new aquarium, I would not. On an aquarium that's over six months old, it would be fine. I would not add them simultaneously. I mean, I would not add them in the same hour. I would add them apart from each other 12 hours or something just to give it some room because they're going to go and attach to tank walls and both of those species of bacteria or both of those products um, which have multiple species in them all those species are probably already living in the system you know so um, they're beginning to talk about aquariums microbiome now just like your gut microbiome and there's a company out there that's even doing some testing on the microbiome and so forth I think their tests aren't where they need to be because they can't tell you species of bacteria. They can only tell you big groups of bacteria, which don't really tell you a lot. Um, one of the reasons that I like to dose bacteria is it keeps all of those strains going in the system. So depending on what you're putting in the aquarium, let's say you're adding some ChemiClean, which is an antibiotic, it's going to kill some strains more than others. So you end up with this lopsided system where and this is one of the reasons that you have problems with products like that later on is you end up with way more of one kind of bacteria and a whole lot less of right. another. You know, the kind of thing that happens in your gut when you take uh, antibiotics. You know, you need to take a probiotic and get your gut straightened out, whether that's yogurt or kefir or whether you're taking something the doctor prescribed or whatever. Um, you know, it's a good thing to get that plethora back in there of different strains of bacteria so that the tank... Um, whatever nutrients come in, you've got something that, that's, that's interacting with that and, and keeping it under control. Kato, if, um, if you use Kato, is that something you should stop using, you know, especially with clean, since clean is um, going to help get rid of uh, green algaes? You know, Kato is a tougher algae than some of the other algaes, and we see people that are able to keep it while they're using clean. Uh, we also see, see people where it starts to recede. Um, now, if you've got something like Calerpa, you, you don't want to use clean with it. You know, there, there are macro algaes that clean doesn't do well with. But uh, we actually see most people being able to do Kato just fine, uh, particularly if they use something like Kato Grow, which we came out with because people were sucking all the iron and trace minerals out of their tank with their Kato, and then their corals look like crap. Right. You know, and they're wondering. You know, why? Well, your, your algae that you're throwing away, you're throwing all these minerals away at the same time. And so they're not available for your corals. Corals have symbiotic algae in their tissues. It's a good portion of how they color up. And so, you know, your corals are looking, you know, washed out because you're, you're sucking all the minerals out. 